Sega Dreamcast. Since the early 2000s, Sega hasn't put out a new console since this stuff. And now here we are. According to Famitsu, on June 4th, he, they're going to publish a groundbreaking announcement from Sega. But what could it possibly be? What type of announcement could shake up the industry like they're trying to report? It could be a multitude of things. So that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about what it can possibly be. What will shake up the industry for all video games. Hello, Magnus here. And if you like nostalgic games, especially if they get brought back to life, then definitely consider subscribing. I talk about all of that, including my favorite series, Shenmue. So hit up that subscribe button, but let's get it started. Sega is a company that is legendary among all video game businesses. They are the one company that competed with the juggernaut, Nintendo, during the 80s and 90s. They were pretty much able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with basically the one company that pretty much owned the video game industry. And what happened to them was tragic. If you don't know, Sega was pretty successful, especially in the early 90s, until they made a few financial mistakes, such as developing way too many systems during the mid 90s, such as the add-on the Sega CD, the add-on of the 32X, the failed launch of the Sega Saturn, which was their 32-bit system. All of these financial failures had, of course, a cost on the company that almost put them out of business completely. And their last hope of all hope was the Sega Dreamcast which did substantially well. It sold 300,000 units within the first week, which was actually a groundbreaking and record-setting launch for video game consoles up until that point in time. And they also had an amazing launch. They had like 18 games at launch day. So it was a console that not only launched with amazing graphics, but it also launched with a library of games that you can get on day one, which many companies don't do to this day. But that company eventually faded into the dark when it came to developing consoles because it cost too much money and the competition, Sony and Nintendo, was too much to compete with. And Microsoft wasn't even around yet. It was really Sony that caused them a big hurdle. But lately, I've got to say lately, they have been on a roll. Sega, I mean, just in the recent history, Streets of Rage 4 was released. That was my last video. Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, did better than expected in the movie theaters. It was one of the best performing video game movies of all time domestically. Granted, um, Detective Pikachu peaked them from a global perspective, but that's partially due to the fact that we're dealing with the current situation that we have now. If not, who knows where it would have been. And even before that, the fact that so many fans of Sega were able to put their money together to relaunch Shenmue and get the third Shenmue game created. And you have Sonic Mania, which was an amazing game that went back to the classic days and added a fresh spin on it. I mean, so many of Sega's franchises are gaining traction. There's even talk about a Sega cinematic universe. I mean, you've got all this talk, all of this goodwill being built to Sega's brand, Sega's IP, Everyone wants to know what they're going to do next. It's already been confirmed that Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the movie, will come out and that they're in the early preliminary stages of development. Bunch of good news for Sega. If you work at Sega, then you must be incredibly excited like you haven't been for so many years. So an actual announcement regarding Sega would be exciting. But does a new console make sense? Let's talk about that. So how much does a new console make sense? Well, let's look at the track history of consoles from like the 80s until now, really briefly. So Nintendo owned the console mar 8-bit console market in the United States, while Sega owned the 8-bit console market in, let's say, Europe, right? So they were competing, but in separate territories. So they kind of avoided each other's space. Then in the 90s, you had Sega and Nintendo in the US market competing heavily with each other. They were almost like 50-50% market share in certain years. It was crazy. But in the 90s were definitely saturated with other systems. Panasonic jumped in with the Panasonic Real 3DO, which was 
CD-based system. You had Atari Jaguar jumping in with their 64-bit machine, which wasn't really 64-bit. It was two 32-bit processors working in tandem to create real 64-bit, which wasn't real, really the case. You also had, for example, the TurboGrafx-16, which also released in the late 80s or early 90s. That was kind of touted as a 16-bit console, but even that really wasn't. But you had a lot of players in the 90s. But no one can really compete with Sega and Nintendo. So a lot of them dropped off until 1995 and the Sony PlayStation was launched. After being slighted by both Sega and Nintendo, Sony decided to do their own thing and come into the console market. One that many thought at the time was already plenty saturated with Sega and Nintendo. But Sony made the right moves by studying the successes and failures of Sega, studying the successes and failures that it learned from Nintendo, as well as its console design, coming up with the Sony PlayStation and launching it to everyone. So how could Sony come and compete with these two dominant forces? Well, Sony made all of the right moves early on. They partnered up with third-party developers, making sure that they had exclusive rights to some franchises, including Final Fantasy VII, which until that point was an exclusive to the Nintendo. They developed a 32-bit system that was priority towards 3D gaming, something that they actually learned from Sega when Yu Suzuki himself developed the ever-popular Virtual Fighter series and Virtual Racing, which was using polygons in order to create an immersive world. Sony said, that's the future. Let's make our system predominantly about rendering polygons and rendering 3D environments. While Sega made the mistake of focusing their system on 2D rather than 3D. So Sony was up and running. They developed the right system. They developed a system that was easy to develop for, for third-party developers. And they started getting exclusive rights to all these franchises. So gamers came in droves because they wanted 3D games. They wanted Final Fantasy. They wanted Metal Gear Solid. They wanted Resident Evil. When you compare Resident Evil between Saturn and PlayStation, Sorry to say, but the PlayStation version definitely stands out far beyond the Saturn version. So they made the right moves and they jumped into a console market that was thought to be saturated. That's what happened in the mid 90s. Then in the early 2000s, although we lost Sega, the console market still seemed a bit saturated with Sony and Nintendo, still dominating the video game industry. But you had Microsoft jump in, in a what looked to be saturated market. And although they had a few bumpy roads in the system, including their extremely huge controller, they looked to get exclusive rights. They got exclusive rights to even Sega franchises, such as Shenmue 2, such as Jet Set Radio Future, such as Panzer Dragoon. But they also focused on first party development and they came at a time where people were demanding more powerful system, more realistic graphics, but they also launched the innovative idea of Xbox Live. Mix that with Halo that really took the online gaming to the next level and they took off. Sure, the Dreamcast was one of, if not the first console to become online ready, but Microsoft learned from that, took that, made it ready for broadband, took support, built in a hard drive, which no other system really did put in a full hard drive in it, where you could put in your own music in that hard drive and then play your own music while you played a different game. It was incredible. And there hasn't been a new, really substantial entry to the video game market since. Sure, others have tried, but failed. Because they can't get that first party development support, third party development support, develop the hardware, and have just the knowledge of the industry, especially in the way it is today. But Sega, with its experience, and with its ability to learn from its mistakes, has the potential to actually come back. But can it come back? Does it make sense to come back? Well, from a financial perspective, maybe to no. I'll tell you maybe, because maybe the industry has changed enough. Every time a new player came in the market, it was during 
a change in the industry. When Sony came in, the industry was changing, moving to 3D. When Microsoft came in, the industry was changing, partially started by Sega, but changing into a more console oriented to go online experience, a community experience. But what's changing now? What changes are we looking forward to now? It's the fact that consoles since the mid nineties have been distributing your video games via optical disc, whether CD, Giga Disc, DVD, or Blu-ray. But how relevant is that? Well, back then, and even now some exist, back then you needed store space, you needed shelf space, you needed to have your game out there so that when mom or the player themselves or dad were shopping for a new game for their kid or you were shopping for a game for yourself, they could see it right in front and they could pick it up. Lines were formed up outside of stores just to pick up these new games. But it's a different market today. With the advent of Steam, PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, you now have the ability to download your video games on the day of release, sometimes before, and then actually play it midnight on release without ever leaving the comfort of your own home. The need for optical media is reducing to those just with who are collectors or those that have poor internet services and they just need to buy the game to be able to get it quicker. And even that population as time increases will reduce and reduce because more internet bandwidth will be delivered across the world. At least that's the plan, especially with 5G networks being developed all across the country and all around the world, being able to download large format files will not be something unheard of, even if you're living pretty much in the middle of nowhere. So, how much do we need optical media? And once, let's say this happens tomorrow with a PlayStation 5 and Xbox decide no more optical media, then you'll have to download them if the industry moves that way. But I don't think they're moving, they're not moving that way right away. But maybe by the time a new Sega console comes out, they might have to. And Sega might be planning for that future. An exclusive system that deals with absolute ridiculously fast speeds and no need for any type of optical media. Or if they do, they'll have like what Nintendo's been doing, using what looks like SD cards for their systems. And that makes sense, rather than selling optical media. But optical media in itself, you can still deliver it to those without taking up brick and mortar space by doing online orders. The point is, Sega no longer needs to have their software take up store space because they can develop and host their own store on their own servers. They can sell their own games directly to consumer without the need of that middleman brick and mortar business. The industry, the video game industry has been changing and will change going forward. And when a console takes advantage of the industry changing, they have the potential for success. So if Sega had the money, to develop a console, change the format of delivery, make its graphics good enough. They don't even have to beat PlayStation or Xbox. They just have to be good enough. Look at Nintendo, that's what they do. And set trends, get the licensing deals for third party, but also have your first party content come back home. You're looking at a successful console, but that's just it, money. Sega made enough mistakes to actually hurt themselves financially for many years. So a new console might be the perfect next step, but it might not be one that they could pay for. And especially with these other types of media taking off, such as their movies, they probably shouldn't or can't afford to develop a new console. And having it spread through multiple consoles or different franchises might actually get their exposure to a wider audience rather than limiting it to just one console. So it might not even make sense to develop a new console. So what is this new announcement? What could it possibly be? New cinematic universe? And I'm actually announcing it? Potentially, but it doesn't really make much sense if you don't have the groundwork laid out. So no. Will it be a new console? I doubt it. Especially with everything I said, I, I don't think that a new console at least to announce it via magazine would make much sense. It makes more sense to announce it directly to your audience rather through some 
third party magazine or, or news article uh, conglomerate that'll put it out there so that you can give them hits. No, you want to bring everyone back to either your YouTube channel to announce it or, or your your brand. You want to come back to your brand, not another magazine. I don't think it's that either, sadly. But what I do kind of a little suspicious about is Sega's been good about relaunching their franchises lately and making money off of it. I do believe it could be one of two things. We're either going to get an old legacy franchise that we're all fans of that's going to come back with a brand new game that's going to excite us all. Something that we haven't seen in a while but we all love. Whether that's Panzer Dragoon, whether that's a new Virtual Fighter, whether that's another franchise that Sega has and hasn't used, who knows. Whether the fact that they hired Yu Suzuki back and now they're developing Shenmue 4 and throwing a bunch of money at it, who knows. But it will be a franchise that is going to reignite excitement in all Sega effects. That's what I suspect. Or, if nothing else, it could be announcement of a new movie produced Paramount and Sega. That movie, who knows? It could be what I talked about last time when I spoke about Shenmue the movie. Virtual Fighter the movie. Or it could be something else. I keep saying Virtual Fighter because it makes a lot of sense. Maybe another franchise that has to do with this universe. But what do you guys think? Definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video or agree with what I had to say, then let me know. If you disagree, tell me why. What do you think it is? If you want to keep growing this community, definitely leave comments and definitely hit that like button because that'll help out this channel grow and get seen by more and we can build an even bigger conversation with an even bigger community and keep it going but as always i will be totally honest you guys always make my day if you subscribe today this is magnus and i'm out can't wait to hear what the news is same guy see you guys later <laughs>